Hi everyone, my name is Matt and welcome back to Blackbird PC Tech and our first video in our Ultimate PC Component Fighting Championship or UPC FC Series. Our Ultimate PC Component Fighting Championship Series is focused on helping you make the tough choices when building your dream PC. Choices like, should I buy CPUX or CPUY? Should I buy GPUX or GPUY? Should I use an air cooler or AIO? These are all profound life-changing questions that we take very seriously here at Blackbird PC Tech. In this series, we are going to help you make the right choice by pitting two components against each other in the PC Octagon to see who wins. In today's video, our focus will be on DDR5 memory with DDR5-6000 in the red corner taking on DDR5-8000 in the blue corner. Before the battle gets started, I wanted to talk a little about DDR5 memory. When it was first released in late 2021 with 12th gen Intel chips and Z690 motherboards, it had some serious issues. Not only was the memory controller on 12th gen CPUs relatively immature, but the price of any decent kit of DDR5 RAM was extremely high. Trying to get a 4DIM motherboard to run stable with all 4DIMs populated at any speed above 4800 mega transfers per second was all but impossible and caused a lot of frustration to early adopters. This came as a shock to many who were coming from mature DDR4 memory where XMP overclock settings just worked. The thing that many people forgot was that DDR4 started much the same way, with manufacturers improving memory controllers and motherboards over time and slowly but surely increasing the stability of higher speed RAM kits. Fast forward a few years and it's now relatively easy to get higher speed and higher capacity DDR5 kits to run stable at XMP settings on 4DIM motherboards with 13th or 14th gen Intel chips. The prices also dropped significantly, especially as AMD adopted the DDR5 standard with their new AM5 platform. You may be wondering what run stable actually means. XMP and Expo settings are memory performance profiles that have been tested and verified to work for the given RAM modules with specific Intel or AMD hardware. So there's settings like speeds and timings that are above the standard set by GDEC and therefore, when you apply these settings, you're effectively overclocking your memory. Sometimes when you try to overclock your memory, it simply will not load into BIOS. When that happens, it's a relatively easy thing to fix. Lower your speed and or timings and try again. The challenge actually is when the overclock appears to work and you successfully boot into Windows. And you may be thinking, really? That's great, right? Well, not so fast. Before celebrating, you really should check that the memory overclock is stable. Unstable memory overclocks can cause some serious issues in Windows and can present themselves in strange ways, not just blue screens. So how should you test for stability? The first tool I recommend is to run Memtest 86 Plus. If you run this and your memory passes a test, then you should be good. If it doesn't, then you will definitely get problems. In addition, you should also check the games and programs that you routinely run to ensure that you can run them without any issues. Bad RAM is one of the most frustrating computer problems to have as symptoms are often random and hard to pin down. So if you're getting strange behavior in Windows, then one of the first things to check is your memory stability. Which brings us to DDR5 high-speed memory kits. So here, I'm saying 7,800 mega transfers per second and above. The latest 14th gen CPUs recently launched alongside refreshed C790 motherboards. The marketing material for these motherboards from ASUS, MSI, Gigabyte, ASRock, all claim better memory stability and support for high-speed memory. Even for their 4 DIM motherboards, most claim support for 8,000 plus memory. I will let you in on a little secret. It's all complete marketing BS. None of these 4D motherboards can run 8,000 plus mega transfers per second with XMP timings and pass memtest. If you want to run high speed memory with speeds above 8,000, I highly encourage you to purchase a 2D motherboard, such as the ASUS ROG Maximus Z790 Apex, the Gigabyte Aorus Tachyon, or the EVGA Dark Kingpin. Even if you purchase one of these motherboards, there is still a good 
good chance that XMP settings will not be stable, but at least you have a fighting chance. There is another big little secret when it comes to DDR5 memory, but more about that later in the video. After all of this, you may be asking yourself if high-speed DDR5 memory is really worth it. Well, let's find out. As mentioned earlier, the battle today is between DDR5 6000 CL30, aka the Challenger, and DDR5 8000 CL38, aka the Champion. The test system being used today was built around the ASUS Maximus Z790 Apex 2DIM motherboard, widely considered the best motherboard for high-speed DDR5 RAM on the market today. The other core components of the test system are, for the case, we have the height Y60 with LCD screen. For the CPU, we have the Intel Core i9-13900KS. For the GPU, we have an Eorus GeForce RTX 4090 Extreme Water Force. For storage, we have four Samsung 990 Pro NVMe 2TB SSDs. For the CPU cooler, we have an MSI Meg Core Liquid S280. For the fans, we have four SL Infinity 120 and six SL140 V2 Lian Li Uni fans. And for the PSU, we have an MSI Meg AI1300P PCIe 5 80 plus platinum power supply. Affiliate links for all of these components are listed in the description below. All testing was performed with XMP1 settings with no further BIOS optimization, such as disabling e-cores, reducing latency and timings, increasing voltage. This was done intentionally to better represent what most PC builders would do when overclocking their RAM. So they would go in, set XMP, and just forget about the rest. Optimizing BIOS, optimizing fan profiles, overclocking the CPU, closing additional background programs in Windows will all result in higher frames per second, but it's not really representative of what a typical user would do. With the system ready to go, let's run some benchmarks. But before we do, I think it would only be appropriate to introduce this the right way. Over to you, Bruce. And now, it's time! Introducing the components fighting for Blackford PC Tech Benchmark Supremacy. In the blue corner, we have the Champion. In the red corner, we have the Challenger. Who will win this battle royale? Stay tuned to find out. Remember how I mentioned that there were two little secrets when it comes to DDR5 memory? Well, the first was that 4DIM motherboards can't really run high-speed DDR5 memory well. The second is that DDR4 memory is still competitive with mainstream DDR5 memory today. In fact, a DDR4 3600CL14 kit will generally beat a high-speed DDR5 7200CL34 kit in gaming. 
So that means if you're still running DDR4 memory, especially if you have a 13th gen Intel chip or 5800X3D, don't feel compelled to upgrade just yet. Unless you can run DDR5 memory at speeds over about 7400, you will not see any meaningful difference in gaming performance relative to well-optimized DDR4 kits. In today's video, we pitted two heavyweight DDR5 memory kits against each other in the PC Octagon to see who will emerge victorious, with DDR5 6000 in the red corner taking on DDR5 8000 in the blue corner. As you can see from the round by round results, it was a knockout by Team Blue with an almost unanimous decision for DDR5 8000. In fact, for the two rounds that resulted in draws, the game was completely GPU bound, such that memory speed had no meaningful impact on the results. Although this was a clear win for the high speed DDR5 8000 memory kit, does it actually make sense when you bring cost into the equation? At double the cost, I would say no, especially when you consider that there's no guarantee that you can even get these memory speeds stable with your system, even if you have a 2DIM motherboard. It sounds great to have fast RAM, but unless you are playing games at lower resolutions, the boost in frames per second just isn't meaningful. Before I wrap things up, I thought it would be good to understand why Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2 showed no benefit with faster memory. It appears after speaking with multiple COD players that the in-game benchmark is much more GPU intensive than you will typically see in-game. To test that for myself, I tightened the timings on my DDR5 8000 kit to CL36, I overclocked the CPU, I shut down all unnecessary background tasks in Windows, and I maxed out the CPU cooler fans to their maximum settings. The results I got are interesting. At ultra quality settings, the benchmark is completely GPU bound at all resolutions as expected. If I drop the quality settings, however, to balanced, 1440p is still GPU bound, but 1080p is actually close to being perfectly balanced. So moving forward, based on these results, I will need to test the Modern Warfare 2 in-game benchmark at balanced quality settings when testing CPUs or memory. Remember, it's not rocket science, it's Lego. My goal is to help you make the right choices and put them together the right way every single time. Thank you for watching the first video in the Ultimate PC Component Fighting Championship Battle Series. If you enjoyed today's video, please hit that like button and subscribe so that you don't miss out on future episodes as other components battle it out in the PC Octagon. Please also comment and offer suggestions on any future components that you would like to see go head to head. Bye for now.